What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Doomsday Hunters. This is actually a name swap. And so there was a game that came out about a year and a half ago called I, Dracula Genesis. It was a game that's a top-down roguelite with RPG elements, some action RPG stuff going on, where you are in the post-apocalypse and you are hunting down all kinds of just crazy-looking monsters and wiping them on out. Along the way, you collected currency and firearms and mods for your guns, and you leveled up and got new abilities and stuff like that. Well, as of this month, they changed their name around, which is really kind of odd. That's one of those things you only really see a lot of the time when a game has bad reviews. But Doomsday Hunters is what the game is called now, and it's had a whole bunch of progress, and it's riding around at about 90% positive ratings on Steam. So I figured we'd dive back in and check and see if the game has changed enough to really kind of justify the name change and what's going on with it and whether or not it's worth your attention. So without further ado, we're going to dive on in, but make sure if you like this game, you check it out down below in the description, see if it's something for your wish list. You can also find a link to my Discord down there, which is the central hub for my entire community, and you're more than welcome to join us. All right, so here we are. This is the beginning hub for the game. As of right now, we're playing, I think, I forget her name, Digital, Digigirl? I don't know. Either way, there's a bunch of different characters that you can play as. They've all got different, like, traversal methods and, like, dodges and things like that. You unlock them by doing various challenges. I've unlocked Armin. I've unlocked Tesla. I think I've unlocked Triton. And I think I've got Hax. And I've got Cyber Girl. And so anyways, you can pick and choose between all these guys. It'll give you a rough synopsis of what it is and, you know, what they do and all that kind of fun stuff. I'll probably just go with the default guy real fast. Uh, you can also choose what dodge you want. It's an accessibility option that they put into the game. So, like, these used to be intrinsically a part of the character, uh, these little dodge methods down here. But they changed it around so that any character can choose any dodge method so long as you've unlocked the character that has that dodge method prior to the selection. And so I think that was just, like, an accessibility thing. Like, some people like certain dodges, but they don't want to play certain characters. And so it gave it, like, a little bit more customization. Our character starts out with a slightly above average pistol and we start out with a little AK-47 right here that we can chunk around with. At the beginning of the game you can choose a class and so we can be a thief, we can be cursed, uh, you can re-roll it over here with the activator panel if you don't like the selections that are available. I'll probably just go with the thief class because it's nice and fast. Uh, so we get a little bit of money right there, and then there's some relics that we can start out with. So sometimes generate a gold when you take damage. On finishing a world, you get full HP, full mana, and full energy. That's pretty spicy. Replace your sidearm with golden gun. Well, I have to try that now. I don't know what the golden gun does. Okay, it's like a little bloop gun. I wonder if it turns the enemies into money or something like that. Uh, progression in the game is gated by you doing achievement type stuff. And then on top of that, you get these little coins right here as you're playing through the game. And you can use them to unlock new relics. Uh, your characters do have progressions. So in between runs, depending on your progress, uh, you will level up your account, which will unlock new enemies. It will unlock new items. It will unlock new traps. Basically, it'll unlock new good and bad things that you're going to have to deal with as you're playing through the game. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. Our health is in the top left corner for future reference. Our mana is right underneath that, which is for our magic spells over here at the bottom left. Uh, we've got our progression currency, our run currency, and then I'm not exactly sure what those coins do. I haven't had, I've played for like an hour. I haven't used any of those coins yet, so like I don't know exactly what those go for. On the left side of our little, I guess, doom guy portrait right here, it does get more bloody, by the way, the lower your health is. Your guys get like more beat up and they get like black eyes and stuff. But anyways... This is your XP meter right here. When it gets up to the top, a little drone will come on out, and you get to pick a perk that will kind of change the way your character functions for the remainder of the run. Or you can just take buffs like more HP. It's really up to you. Take whatever you want. All right, so this game functions based on islands. And so basically, you step on these little teleporters. It'll take you to a different island. You resolve some challenge or you get some treasure, and then you come back to the central hub and you go back out. The ultimate goal is to find the boss, kill him, you get a boss key, and then you take that to a boss portal, and it will take you to the next segment of the level. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we got going on down here. There's a shadow right there. I don't like that at all. What is that? Apparently it was like a bomb or something. Dude, this game is so wild and like wacky. I never know what's happening in this game. Uh, we've got enemies coming up right here. Uh, the golden gun actually seems to deal like a lot of damage, and it'll fire as fast as you can squeeze the trigger. I'm actually kind of excited. What are those? Okay. 
Like I said, dude, I never know exactly what's happening in this game. I'm always confused. I'm always like, this game is weird, but it is dope. Like, we'll go ahead and fire a couple rounds at this dude. Oh my god, he fired some squiggle beasts at me. Okay. Don't feel in love with the uh, invasive squiggling that I'm getting right now. I think I'm going to break out the old uh, chopper real quick just to wipe these guys out. Grab my ammo real fast. That was an ammo pack you see on the ground. The game does have a bunch of, oh, am I like tripping balls right now because I inhaled gas? This game has a lot of drug references. So like there's mushrooms you find around. You can just eat the mushrooms. Spawn a leech pool for five seconds. That's a single use ability right there. If we pop that off, these tend to be really, really powerful. We also have this right here, which is kind of like a limit break. When it fills all the way up, uh, you can hit your right click and it will do like for this one right here, we throw out a bunch of Molotovs that light like half the battlefield on fire. One observation I do have about the assemblage of the level is that I feel like the islands could be a little bit larger Larger. And then I also feel like there could be more enemies to make up for the fact that you've got more room to maneuver Like I definitely find myself craving more enemy density in this game. So that's an SA008. What does it do? Oh, that's the same pistol that I started out with. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna keep my golden gun then. Who's this guy? Hey, what's up newcomer humble medic at your service? We're currently in need of some fresh blood. Oh, uh, okay, so I can lower my max health and... Okay, I can gain four max HP right now if I give him 25. That'll leave me with nine HP left. We'll be cutting it kind of close, but health restoratives do drop fairly frequently. And the first couple levels are pretty easy, and so I feel like we can get away with it. I'm gonna do it. There we go. So we have more max HP right now, but, you know. Uh, what is this right here? Can I, like, break it open? Yeah, let's do that. What is that? the boosts get tier two relics nice let's do it uh you can salvage just about anything in the game just to get money just in case you don't want it on top of that you can also forego every crate in the game and salvage the crate in order to get progression coins just in case you want to have like fast progression through the game muscle juice we get more damage and more ammo drops five max hp 10 range three keys i'm gonna take that one uh these keys right here i don't know does that blow up I can never tell in this game, dude. Some stuff, like, blows up, and, like, some stuff does not. And, like, you gotta track it down. If you see a little shield pop out right there, pay attention to the color. Match it up to the item on your UI, and it means that that object can be destroyed by that specific ability. So, like, some things have a green shield and can only be destroyed with magic. Some things have a purple shield and can only be destroyed with your special. Oh, I get both? I had no idea that I get both. Oh, well, that was a much better crate than I gave it credit for. If you have keys, you can open these blue boxes that are laying around. Uh, I think that increased my speed from what I recall. Sometimes I it's not entirely clear what certain stuff does. You can, like, open up your inventory over here and... It does give you a synopsis of your stats and how you've modded things and all the pickups that you've picked up along the way, thus denoting the name pickup. But, uh... You know, sometimes there's still unexplained stuff like that right there where I'm not exactly sure what it does. The boss room is over there. I'm going to go fish for pickups in other cells for just a second just to see if we get anything good. Uh, we got some zombos over here. They are vomiting sluggy boys at me again. I'm going to throw some Molotovs at them because everybody knows that, like, lighting zombies on fire is one of those prevailing tropes from horror. What does this do over here? Heal 25 HP? Yes. Let's do that. All right, so we're back up almost at full health, but we're in better shape now than we were previously. What does that do? How do I get through these doors over here? Is that like a nuke? What is it? Okay, so it's a nuclear bomb. Gotcha. Um, I don't know exact... Oh, we have to have a special to get through there. Oh, I don't have a special. I get the feeling that we may not be going this way. Our special only fills up from us dealing damage with our other stuff. Oh, hostiles detect. Does this teleport me over there? It does. Okay, well, curiosity has been slaked. I am now aware of options that I was not aware of before. We'll go ahead and get these guys with the AK real fast. Give them the old Rambo treatment. Uh, you do get mods for your guns as you get further on into the game that are going to change the way your guns behave as well. Things like multi-shot, piercing, your bullets are on fire. Uh, not only are your bullets on fire, but your bullets now spread fire. Uh, you know, your bullets have little fireballs that come off of them in kind of 45 degree angles two and three times for its travel. Like, it, it gets pretty it gets pretty wild and crazy, and honestly, the customizability of, of some of the weapons is fairly enjoyable. Now, we do have keys, so I can open that. What is that? 
A nano shield. Six seconds of invincibility. Yeah, I'll take that. And then we'll scrap the old one. It's only worth one coin anyways. I love that coin pickup sound. Ow, that thing hurt me, dude. I didn't know what it was. And so I figured I'd walk into it like an idiot and just kind of like rub my face on it to find out. And I guess that I made the wrong decision. So now that we made it in from this side, like... Is there anything we can do here? Oh, I wonder if I like jump into that. Doesn't look like it. Like, maybe these are, like, jump pads over here? I don't know. Like, sometimes there's, like, little jump pads and stuff, and if you can jump and go through the ring, it'll teleport you back down over here, but I don't see, like, a jump pad or anything around. Like I said, this game is, like, really weird and esoteric, and I never have any idea what's going on. I'm, like, always confused. I'm never quite sure how to use my utilities to get what I want. It's just, it's that kind of game, man. It is that kind of game. Well, it looks like I could just skeef along the outside right there and not even worry about it. Uh, I do not want to scrap that chest. That's a gun chest, so we can get the Pulse Blaster. I do like the Pulse Blaster. So what the Pulse Blaster does is you fire it, and then when you reload it, it charges up and it does a super bullet. And the super bullet has an AoE on it, which can be really good for clearing tight rooms. But you kind of got to mod it to have, like, a faster fire rate if you really want it to do, like, super well. Because the fire rate is really underwhelming on it. And so that's something to keep in mind, too. Oh, look. Enemies, dude. We've got slimes that are on heroin. So they are the exact opposite of the friendly, adorable slimes that you hang out with in Slime Rancher. Uh, no clue. That looks like a hermit crab that lives in some kind of booger crate. So that's kind of horrifying. I'm gonna kill him off. The skulls are indeed HP or XP when you pick them up. Uh, the downside there is that power-ups in this game, they disappear after a little bit. So stuff like health, money, XP, they fade out. I, I don't, I've never been a big fan of that particular gameplay mechanic. I've always felt like that's kind of one of those things that's like really outdated. Oh, I get three coins, but I get poisoned. I see what they were going for right there. Okay, that's why the coin was green. Uh, we've got the Fan of Daggers. Isn't that what I have already? That is what I have already. But this one has more uses. So I'll take this one and we'll scrap this one. Oh, we got a key out of it. Very nice. Okay, that was way better than I expected. Uh, I'm almost out of bullets for my poor AK-47. So I'm going to fall back for a minute. And we're just going to kind of... Yeah, it does. It makes some poop coins. I wonder if it does less damage or something to kind of like... I don't know, to kind of like counter for the fact that it's generating like a lot of currency for me right now. Sir, if I can have you stop doing whatever this weird Qbert thing is that you're doing and just kind of like back up off me, I'd appreciate it. And there's a medical station right there. I am getting free money right now, so it sort of feels like I should maybe spend my cash freely without worrying about it. Oh, what's in that crate right there? Oh, my little speed thing went away. Okay. Uh, that heals me for 25. Yeah, I'll take it. We, like, have self-replenishing money, so I'm not super worried about kind of freeballing it a little bit with some of my my things that I've picked up. Oh, nice. Dude, our AK's reloaded. Uh, later on in the game, as we level up, we will be able to increase our magazine size. Uh, we can increase through pickups, like, the amount of ammo we can carry. Uh, we can increase all kinds of stuff. Pretty much everything in this game is kind of open for negotiation, depending on what power-ups you get. And I think that's actually pretty cool. The game has a lot of variability with regards to just the stuff you can pick up and the things that can happen. We'll reload right there. We got a lady with a baby. Oh, Hunter, I lost my husband to the monster. Can I help you in any way? Um, I mean... Alien tech, I guess? I don't know. Uh, when visiting a new island, you get two gold. Oh, not bad, dude. I'll take that right there. Uh, this game, by default, does have, like, a, a metric ton. Like, a ridiculous amount of screen shake. I would highly recommend you turn that off. Luckily, it is an option inside the options menu for you to disable the screen shake. I, I found the game to be really difficult to play with the sheer amount of screen shake that they put into it. Um, and once I turned it off, I actually found the game to be much more pleasurable, and I started enjoying myself pretty tremendously. Uh, we've got a boss over here, the Super Gorilla Head. Okay. Uh, never seen him before, but sure. I can spray bullets at him. Uh, I don't know if those hurt me. They sort of feel like they hurt me. I think we just gotta, like, rotate on this dude. I don't want to, since I can't guarantee most of my shots getting through, I kind of want to golden gun him a little bit. I don't know if those things hurt me on touch either, but I'm going to try and grab the coins while we're in the neighborhood. Eh, nope. He just keeps firing stuff from the directions I don't want him to fire things from. 
I'm not getting much damage off right here, although I do like the fire. Like, I love weapons that will fire as fast as I can click my mouse. I always, like, really, really favor weapons like that when I play video games. Uh, your dodge does give you iframes, so don't worry about kind of going through bullets or anything else while using your dodge. It does give you iframes, so you can take that one to the bank straight from me. That was one of the first mechanics that I decided to sort of verify. Dude, how many of these little bowel balls do you actually have to throw at me? Uh, almost every single one of the bosses in this game is multi-phasic, in case you were wondering about that. Uh, they will have multiple phases. They will have lots of things that they do. I'm going to kind of just right down Main Street here. And then I'm going to give him just a little bit of birth right there. Okay, so he sucks them back in, and then he kind of spreads them around. Got it. Uh, he's got three phases. Okay, the last boss that I fought for the first level only had two phases. This guy's got three. Although I do like how you're slowly kind of destroying the head. That's kind of badass how it, like, slowly degrades. We leveled up from that kill right there. I'm going to grab all that ammo, the ancient coins, the health. There's our level up drone, so we can actually go up to this, and it will give us a selection of perks that we can play around with. Uh, we can go with, we get a cloaking device after we dodge. We've got a second jump when you're in midair, and then we have stamina regen. Uh, double jump sounds good. I think I go with double jump. Yeah, that actually looks like it's probably gonna allow me to access some of the little things that we weren't able to get after. We've got faster fire rate and more bullet speed, more damage and three weapons to select from. Fire rate 20, sidearm up 20. I'm gonna take that real fast. Okay, I'll take it. I mean, that also sort of like, it doesn't guarantee, but it increases our chances of getting things out that we want to reload the AK. Uh, we've got the alien bomb. It's a special weapon. It does 50 piercing damage and 300 splash, and we gain HP when we use it. Yeah, what does it do? Oh, that's super, okay. All right, I fully support that, dude. Anything that blows up the entire screen, I am a fan of. Kill you off, grab my AK ammo right there. I'm doing so much damage right now, though, just with the golden gun that I kind of don't want to use anything other than my sidearm. Uh, these little stones and whatnot, they do block projectiles, so you can use them for cover. Uh, we got some weird little bomb spiders running around. Beware. When you kill those things, they tend to throw a little fireball up in the air, and if it comes down on you, you take damage. I'm going to have to be careful about spamming my dodge now that I have the double dodge. But yeah, I do think the enemy density could be a little bit higher. Like, if they added, like, 25% more space to each of the tiles, and then they added, like, 50% more enemies, I'm into, like, bullet spraying, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a big fan of Enter the Gungeon, and that's one of those games that really satisfies my need for enemy density. Uh, we'll grab a little bit of money right there. It looks like we actually sometimes get a coin back when we shoot crates with this thing, too. So it can proc off of any number of things. We've got the key to the exit, so I suggest that we head there and we make use of it. I think the exit was over here, if I remember right. Yeah, I think it was. Yep, there it is. All right, well, we're going to call in our helicopter and get on out of here. We have, like, a skyship that takes us in between levels. The pixel art in this game just absolutely fantastic. I think it looks great. I don't really have any complaints about it. Uh, we can get an upgrade in between each level. Usually there's something like... Usually there's, like, one or two that are flat bonuses, and then the other two are things that, like, something good happens, but something bad happens. Uh, so we can gain some currency. We can get a random perk. We can get a mod slot. I'm going to get the extra weapon slot so that I have more weapons to play around with because I feel like we're constantly just sort of surfing over the top of not having enough ammo, and I'd like to keep that resolved because you guys know me. I'm addicted to my DACA. I can't help it. Now, these guys come up and go down, basically. You can only hit them when they're up in the air, though, but when they're up in the air, they have this tendency to, like, fire things at you. I have no clue what that weird abomination is. I'm just going to kill it flatly real, real fast. We'll reload the AK. We'll run up on this dude, see if we can get them all in one big burst. A little bit of XP right there to be had. And we've got a mushroom. I'm just going to scrap it. So the mushrooms are the standard fair roguelike stuff. You never know what a mushroom's going to do. You pick up a mushroom, you use a mushroom, anything can happen. You can lose half your health. You can lose some of your max mana. You can gain 50 gold. You can get like 10 added onto your movement speed. You never know, dude. It's just completely and totally random. And I'm just not that much of a gambler at this phase in my life. Uh, we've got another magic spell over here. We get homing projectiles for four seconds. I don't really care about that. I honestly haven't really been using my fan of daggers anyways. And well, that's weird because, like, I am a fan of daggery things. Oh, my God. 
Is he like malfunctioning? He's firing bullets all over the place, man. Uh, that's a shrine to Gambler right there. Uh, once again, it's kind of like eating a mushroom, but in a naked old man statue. Uh, so basically, it's the same thing as eating a mushroom, just a lot more uncomfortable and more difficult to explain to your parents. Uh, and so he's going to do something random. And once again, you never know what he's going to do. Uh, I've clicked on him a couple times. It's never worked out that great for me. It's always made me feel, you know, a little bit nervous. And so I just don't do it anymore. Uh, yeah, we can get all those floating crates now, which is pretty cool. Over here, we can break that crate open with a special. What's in there? Oh, my God. Uh, Spectral X582. 200 damage, and it costs a lot less energy. Well, do we know what it does? I got to build up some energy to actually find out how it benefits me. We've got a quick save. We get a copy of ourselves. The clone reactivates if you die on this level. That's really, really good. Uh, I think we can use that right here, actually. So there's our clone. He's just going to hang out there until we die. And then when we die, it'll teleport us back over here. Uh, he does all the same things that we do. He's like a mirroring of us. What's in there? Ow, I lit myself on fire, dude. When scrapping, gain gold. Nice. Definitely all about that. Um, I kind of like the healing utility a little bit better. Like, I don't know what that weapon does, and it seems really cool. But I sort of feel like... What is that? Obtain Walker for 15 seconds. Your suit absorbs 80% of it. You can't just tell me that I get a Walker suit, dude. Like, I'm going to throw away invincibility for that because I want to deploy my mech. And I want to just roll around with, like, double machine gun cannons or something. Let's go find some enemies to test this on. But like I said, this game is a wild trip. Like, this is a weird, wacky game that does not worry itself too much with being taken seriously. Uh, they focus on basically, like, everything being kind of fun in it. Even if it's, like, abundantly overpowered. Which, once again, I always recommend... Oh, my God. Okay. I don't know what just happened, but now I feel like I've made a mistake and I've been hurt. Uh, yeah, let's summon the robot, dude. Oh, it's like a... Oh, it's like a Dr. Octopus suit. Okay. And it looks like if we hit him with the claws, we actually kill him. Okay, good to know. How long do I have this for? Okay, I had questions about how long I would have that for, and the game has answered them for me. Uh, we have a... What is this? Gain vampirism plus five and improve your shooting. It's a multi-use relic. Okay. So I assume that allows us to get health back from the damage we're dealing. That'd be my guess anyways. Uh, this room's a little bit complicated. Basically, with electrical damage, anything that steps on electrical damage gets a little node above it. And the node basically makes you magnetized. And this thing right here is a magnet. Because of the guns and the equipment we have on us, it will pull us in like ever so slightly. But if you're magnetized, you're basically stuck to it until the magnetization goes away. Uh, what do we have in here? I think that's a flamethrower, if I remember correctly. I'll take it. It's not my favorite weapon. But, you know, it can be kind of cool, especially with the bounces and whatnot. We have four keys right now. I gotta start using some of the... Who is this weirdo? Got blood? I can extract it remotely. You won't feel a thing. Oh, it's spirit armor. Okay, so it guards you from one hit. Gotcha. So for 30 health, we can get a weapon. We can clear our radiation. Uh, I think I'm good for right now. Three lives lose 30% of your HP. Yeah, I took that on my last run, and it worked out pretty well. Evasion plus 30, limited to one active armor. I'll take it. Yeah, that sounds good. We can take that. Uh, it is going to be listed. If you go over here, it'll be in your armor slot. So this game, you have, like, general purpose passive relics, but you also have gear like backpacks and boots and helmets and stuff like that, uh, which sort of add to the action RPG flair of the title. There's a boss over here? Yeah, let's do it. We're almost at the end of the episode anyways, and I'm sure you guys want to see some boss fighting. He never gets hungry, the Earth Eater. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm gonna wharf him with Flamin. The fire rate on this thing, man. I need it to be, like, a little faster. I think if we can get a mod that gives it, like, 50% fire rate, I think it's going to work out pretty good. Uh, let's go back to the AK real fast, because I think that'll actually chug out some more damage against this guy. If this is how bad his first phase is, I have no idea how his second phase is going to be. Uh, yeah, just put some put some bullets down range, dude. We do have a healing portal right near us, and then we also heal back up to full and everything once we get out of here. 
Come on. He's down. Oh, that's the whole boss fight. He only had one phase. Very nice. Okay, so we got our boss key. We got our heals. We got our ancient coins. We have the doll. We get 10% energy. We have the memory cartridge. Gain 5 HP and then gain 400 XP. And enemies occasionally will give you extra XP. We have quick boots, which give us speed and fire rate. But only if we've used up our jump cooldown. Oh, okay. I'll probably take that one then. That sounds good to me. And there's a level up right there, so we'll get another perk. So we've got the emergency kit, stuff you might need. When you jump, you equip Molnir for five seconds. Four random weapon mods. That sounds great, actually. Let's mod some weapons out here. So we get shot projectiles split in two. We have magazine size increased by two. Fire two projectiles in an arc. Mod reduces your base damage by 20%. Increase your fire rate. So fire rate goes on you. And then I want magazine size on you. It'll get this little icon underneath it when you've modded out the weapon. Uh, we can only have one mod at a time right now, but you can increase your mod capacity. Uh, you probably, I think you saw it when we were back on the airship. And so that'll allow you to put more mods onto your guns uh, so that they can become more effective and more deadly. Oh, look at that. The boss exit is over here. I don't have a whole lot of like ammo left. So if one of you guys could drop like a little ammo pack for me, that'd be the best. Por favor. Gain 20 ammo for all of your weapons. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll use that right now. And then I'll just pick my vampirism back up. Perfect. Didn't get any money or anything. Who is this guy? Let me tell you a story. I once lived a happy life in my lovely sewers until one day four green thugs with swords and sticks came. And a rat. They kicked my butt and threw me out. I'm going to have my revenge one of these days. Okay. So I can reroll all my weapon affixes. Oh, yeah. Did I mention the weapons are randomized? <laughs> like, they always shoot the same way, but they have different mods on them that do different stuff. Buy some mushrooms. Sell our skills. Eh, I'm fine with whatever, dude. Uh, but, yeah. This game was called I, Dracula Genesis, and it's been in early access for a while. Now... It is called Doomsday Hunters. So anyways, check it out. I think if you're into games like Isaac or Enter the Gungeon or Nuclear Throne or any of that kind of genre of games with the top-down shooter roguelites, there's a lot to like here. There's a significant density of content for you to consume, even though the game's in early access. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but for now, it's time for me to go. Bye, everybody.